heading out to Boise, Idaho today. It's gonna be really cool. Um, going to be speaking at the Exiles in Babylon conference. I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna be talking about the need for forgiveness in the race conversation. All right, finally in Boise. Let's get it. Uh, I'm really excited for tomorrow. I think God's gonna move powerfully. What? Oh, thanks, guys. Ah, I love coffee. I'm literally wearing my team coffee shirt, so this is perfect. Holy Land Illustrated Bible. Thank you so much. Church unity is not optional. I want to untie this the right way. I'll just like rip it open. Yes, 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 yes. Embodied, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so we're going to be doing conversations in the raw. Wow. Yeah, so if anyone's interested, there are going to be conversations in the raw coming up. We're going to discuss a bunch of topics with different people going through them. Doctor, 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 and then it's like, give me a titi. But I'm so, 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 so honored. If you guys are interested, sign up. I will be Thursdays, 4.30 p.m., May 12th, June 16th, and July 14th. Theologyintheraw.com forward slash conversations. Woo! All right, dude. Ah, oh, I'm so excited to see this. This is awesome. My artwork. Uh, I painted this little print, Exiles in Babylon 2022 Acrylic on Canvas. If you want to read it, you can pause it. This is the sort of symbolism that I put into the painting. Thank you guys. You, you guys are the best. Look at all this stuff. You all have blessed me so much already and we haven't even started. It's a little close to 8 a.m. Uh, today's April 1st. <laughs> I can't wait to share what God has laid on my heart about forgiveness, especially with regards to Christianity and Christians responding to race. I'm excited. I was a little nervous yesterday. My heart's been pounding. I'll come back to that later. But I think this will be okay. So ultimately, I hope like I hope the glory goes to God. All right, guys, check in. A little bit later. Man, there is so much that happened today. I feel so bad that I did not record as much as I should have. I am so tired. Met so many amazing hungry for God people, inspiring me to be more intentional about my faith and my learning, to never stop learning, to never feel like I've arrived. That was awesome. And after my flight back to LA, that heart pounding that I mentioned earlier, well, it turned into a 3 a.m. hospital visit, and I was advised to take it easy in the coming weeks. So here's some footage from a light El Sereno skate session from mid-April. April recaps. Shortly after my return from Idaho, I thought a lot about how the people in this very white region of America were so clued in on Africa. I wrestled with the concept of white saviorism versus a genuine desire to help those in developing countries. There's obviously a weird tension around American mission trips and its aesthetic, so I asked folks what they thought via Instagram and here were some responses. You can pause to read. This is my personal stance, which is an odd take, but it is what it is. I've also been studying in preparation for the Christianity and Race cohort, which I'm leading in May through to July. Registration link in the description. I thought a lot about how the Jonestown tragedy is an eerie mirror for some of the toxicity we see in social justice today. It's a sad but appropriate case study into how the mixture of race and Christianity can go very wrong. So that's definitely going to be a point of discussion for the Christianity and Race cohort, and I cannot wait to get into it. I have a confession. My guilty pleasure right now is following the Depp and Hearn trial. But while that was going on, Elon bought Twitter. I wasn't that excited about it. I felt like folks were looking at Musk as some sort of savior of free speech. My mind immediately went to Neuralink and what our next struggle as humans is going to be, which might have a lot to do with artificial intelligence, a la the video game Detroit Become Human. I even wonder if our squabbles about race and gender and politics distract us from following the advancements made in that arena. Let me know what you think about it.
Prior to this El Sereno session, I tried out bulletproof greens for the first time. I'll share how that's going soon because I am not interested in taking my health for granted anymore. I ended the month in San Diego in support of my talented roommate's show and finished reading Derwin L. Gray's How to Heal Our Racial Divide, which I highly recommend. And I also got to see this gnarly ship. And now for the part that I've been stalling to get to. It has been one year since I had a radical deliverance from demonic oppression. You heard that right. I shared an hour long video on my Instagram live, so if you want to get the details on that, I'll link it below. But this April was the final month of my first year post deliverance. It reminds me of the promise of Isaiah 54, which reads, you will forget the shame of your youth and you will remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. May 3rd, 2021 was the day Jesus did something amazing for me. But the difference is really in what happened this past year. YouTube was a surprising explosion with tree branches of other opportunities opening up. I just spoke at a conference. I'm a fellow for an awesome foundation. I feel like I can love and receive love authentically. Sexual depravity is another thing I was radically delivered from. And it's all by the power of Jesus. I can love and forgive myself and see myself as worthy and not live in perpetual shame. It's a gift of freedom, of being alive and living comfortably in your own skin that I never even knew was possible.